Your tax problems don't care who you are, but we do. I'm going to tell you right now, I feel like the PA music is piped right into our sound, right into our mic. I mean, for the crew, we got a whole crew in the in the booth with us tonight, including special guest Eric Bailey from the Tulsa World. Um, it literally sounds like there's a concert going on in here right now. So they've at least juiced up the sound system as Jada Coleman digs in. Here we go on a gorgeous night in Kansas. Thanks for joining us. Hope you'll enjoy the broadcast as we'll enjoy bringing it to you. First pitch is low, and we are underway at 5.02 p.m. They got their Caitlin Fournier on, getting this game started on time. Let's go. Well done, KU Game Ops. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Jada. Good spot. Strike one. Strike is called by today's home plate umpire, which is Tony Williams. Kelly Dimenow. She's at first with Michael Parker over at third. They'll rotate. Dimenow will be behind home plate tomorrow. Coleman swings through the off speed for strike two. Playing straight away with that wind blowing out. Get that Trails Golf Club weather report in a moment. Coleman behind here, a ball and two strikes. Casey Hamilton. The lefty rocks, fires in the dirt. Those baby blue uniforms, a sweet look from Kansas with the Jayhawk in cursive across their chest. Looks like a red outline on it. Darker blue Sox Sooners with the all uh, crimson look with white piping. As Coleman bounces one back up the middle off the glove of the second baseman, Anderson, in the center field. That's how you get it started. Jada Coleman. We'll wait the official ruling on it, but I I think Rosak, it's Rosak at second, not Anderson. I don't know why this moron wrote Anderson on his spotter board. That guy needs to be fired. But as the ball was bounced back up the middle, she got a glove on it, but I don't think she would have got Coleman at first. It is indeed ruled a hit, and Jada Coleman is aboard for TRH innings. And the first pitch is lifted deep to center field, and it is gone! TRA Jennings lights the fuse in Lawrence with a bomb to the deepest part of the field, and the Sooners strike first. It's 2 nothing, Oklahoma. TRA with a bomb over the 220 mark in center field, and Oklahoma strikes first. Now, we might want to calm down just a little bit here. This south-southwest wind at 16 miles an hour is blowing directly out. So that could potentially be the first of many here. Hopefully just for the crew in Crimson and Cream as Brito takes the first pitch low. Home runs this season are brought to you by the dedicated people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas. Quite the solid investment to sponsor Sooner Softball home runs. Number 69 on the season for the Sooners. Little looper to first, one away. Nice play over there by Bagshaw. That sun is beaming right into the eyes of the right side of the infield for Kansas. But no doubt in Bagshaw on that one. And there's one away for Ella Parker. Lefty-lefty matchup here. A little deeper in the outfield for the Jayhawks as the first pitch is popped up. Shallow left field, foul territory. Facing over and making the play is Anderson, and there's two away. So Brito pops out to first. The second baseman, number 40, Parker, foul territory, pops out to left. Here's the Big 12 player of the week, and deservedly so, Alina Torres. Getting the start at second. 
which for Torres, her 22nd start this season. The first pitch is in for a strike. This in the 33rd game of the 2024 campaign for the Sooners. All these numbers that might matter to some of you. Two zip, quick start. The pitch to Torres. She had a cut, fouled it straight back. I guess we've talked enough about the weather. We should give you our Trails Golf Club weather report. It is gorgeous. Upper 60s, lower 70s, game time temp 68 degrees. But there is that wind that's blowing out. South, southwest wind at 16 miles an hour. The Trails Golf Club in Norman, where you'll experience everything you love about golf and more. Way outside from Hamilton. On the one two. Waiting on deck is our Love's Travel Stops player to watch, Riley Boone. The one two. Looped into center field, pretty deep, racing and making a sensational catch in the gap is Price to take away extra bases from Torres. That ball had some juice. And as it carried in the wind towards right center field, Price came over and made a play. Swell goes through her final pregame tosses as Oklahoma takes the field up 2-0 on Kansas as we head to the bottom of the first inning. Log on to Soonersports.com slash kids for information about joining the Sooner Junior Kids Club. Presented by og Brought to you in part by Orthodontics exclusively Mathis Home and Devon Energy. And Brahms Ice Cream and Dairy Store. Farm Fresh for over 50 years. A two-run home run from T.R.A. Jennings, 69th on the season for the Sooners as a team. For Jennings, a team-leading 13th. Now to work for Kelly Maxwell. Lefty-lefty matchup, first pitch, strike. So far, so good, Tony Williams. That first pitch being a strike, we're off to a good start. Maxwell has faced Kansas plenty in her career and has had plenty of success. There's a pop-up on the infield. Jennings, uh, Torres will let it bounce once and throw to first to get the out. Alina had the sunglasses on. Mentioned that sun is glaring right into the right side of the infield. And when she popped it, she popped those sunglasses down. I could have sworn that it was 2023 all over again, and that was Tiare over there. <laughs> One away for Lyric Moore. First pitch swinging, and she fouls it off. Strike one. We pay off a little bit on Maxwell's career versus Kansas. This is her sixth start against the Jayhawks. She's 4-0 with a 1.15 ERA. Has thrown 30 now in two-thirds of an inning against the Jayhawks. Ludlam can't pull in the one, the 0-1 pitch for strike two. Ball one, one and one. Here in Lawrence, this is just her second start. I mean, or pardon me, her third start. As there's a bouncer to short. Oh, Jenny, smooth on the short hop. Throws from short stop to get the out, and there's two away. The short stop, number 31, Haley Price. Maxwell, last year, here in Lawrence, or pardon me, 2020, yeah, 2022 here in Lawrence. Six innings. 11 strikeouts, 6 walks in a win. First pitch ball, low away. Low and away to Holly, uh, Haley Kripe, the shortstop. Olivia Bruno, their DP, waits on deck. I guess in a roundabout way, what I'm trying to say is Kelly Maxwell, while an Oklahoma State cowgirl, had a lot of success against Kansas. That 1-0 pitch doesn't miss by much. Two balls and no strikes. Kripe hitting 309 on the season for Kansas, their shortstop. 11 extra base hits. Here comes the 2-0. Swing and a miss. Got her to chase.
Kripe leads the squad with seven doubles. Had her first career multi-home run game against Houston on March 22nd. And Maxwell got her to chase. Strike two. Threw it right by him. They had a line waiting to get in here to Rocha Ballpark. It was wrapped around the corner. They only opened the gates an hour before first pitch. Swing and a miss on the 2-2 pitch. And Kelly Maxwell sets the birds down in order in the first. First pitch to Riley Boone in the second inning is up and away for ball one. Oklahoma leads Kansas 2-zip, a two-run home run in the first inning from Tiare Jennings. And a sensational play in center field by Price to take away extra bases from Alina Torres. Boone, a little nubber right out in front of the circle. No chance as she beats out an unintentional bunt. Stay hot, Riley Boone. Our Love's Travel Stops player to watch today. Love's Travel Stops, the heart of the highway. And here's Sid Sanders. Number one, Sidney Sanders. Sid Sanders is due. Had one of the hottest runs at the start of Big 12 play. Still seeing the ball really well. Has the potential to have a big weekend. First pitch, a little bit up and away, ball one. When Boone stares down to look in the batter's box, all she's seeing is the sun. It's bright. Same for Bagshaw and Rozak on the right side of the infield. 1-0 pitch is up high, 2-0. All season long, the Sooners have been fantastic with the runners on base. Sanders has been one of the key cogs in that. 30 runs batted in already this season. And it might be 32. This one's deep to left field. Get out of here, ball. It's a two-run home run from Sidney Sanders. And Oklahoma. Jumps out to a four-zip lead on the power of two bombs from Jennings and Sanders. Greatest sponsorship maybe ever is that Sooner Home Runs are proudly brought to you by the dedicated people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas. 70 team home runs. Here is Riley Ludlam. Oklahoma as a team already second in the country with 68. Well, coming into tonight, 68. Chasing who else in number one but Miami of Ohio. First pitch to Ludlam is in the dirt. Four runs on four hits for the Sooners. Two of those home runs. And in the blink of an eye, The Sooners have landed a potential knockout blow here early. Let's see if they can keep it rolling with Ludlam at the plate. That's a little bit out. Two balls and no strikes. Sooners have had success against Hamilton when they faced her in the past. That was one of the things that really jumped out to me in prepping for this broadcast. Ludlam pops this one a mile high on the infield. Who's got it? Anderson at third, drops it. Ludlam's on her way to second. Wow. This wind, this wind is a problem. And it caused issues for Anderson on a ball that just drifted away from her at the last moment. And the way that Hamilton responded off the bat, you kind of thought this, this has the chance to be trouble, and it is. Ludlam stands at second. What a time right now for the nine-hole hitter, Cassidy Pickering, to get going. First pitch to the freshman is perfect, strike one. Pretty good job, too. Give Lyric more credit. Looked like she was set up a little bit more outside and kind of at the last minute slid back in. Might have pulled that in for a strike. Runner at second, 
Nobody out. Already four zip Sooners. The 0-1 pitch to Pickering is lined off the glove of Rozak, the second baseman into center field. Patty Gasso will wave home Riley Ludlam, and it's an RBI single for the freshman. Cassidy Pickering, and it's 5 nothing Sooners. I thought for a moment Coach might think about holding up. The center fielder, Jordan Coleman. Ludlam, but no doubt about it. There you go, Cassidy Pickering. and She hit that ball hard. We're going to have a circle visit here. As Oklahoma is, they're not messing around here tonight, huh? Laura Heberling makes her way to the circle. She joined the Jayhawks in January where she was the pitching coach at Maryland. She's been uh, an Iowa Wesling, Utah State, Utah, uh, Maryland last year, and now first-year pitching coach at Kansas. She makes her way back to the circle. See what advice she gave to Casey Hamilton, who spins the ball into her glove as Jada Coleman digs in. The Sooners have turned the lineup over. It's 5 nothing, top of the second. Pitch clock. Action clock at five as strike one just crosses the outside corner. (laughs) Five runs on five hits. Kansas has been deemed with the error on the pop-up on the infield to Anderson. Coleman had a cut, swing and a miss. She's quickly behind, no balls and two strikes. Jada led the game off with a bouncer up the middle. And Rozak, the second baseman, got a glove on, but just couldn't make the play to first. Here comes the 0-2. Way out. That ball moved, too. Wind continues to gust out to left field. Anything in that direction off the bat of Coleman is getting out of here. The one-two. Bounces this one back up the middle. Nice job cutting it off by Kripit short. Steps on the back for one to first. Double play. That is a rarity and took the perfectly placed ball to even make it a possibility. A six unassisted three double play as Kripit does it herself and there's now two away as tra jennings digs in five nothing sooners jennings homered her last time up first pitch way outside ball one with the way that jennings has been hitting up two outs even though this is a really good two out team not not that i would ever want to face Alyssa brito but T.R. Jennings chasing all kinds of career milestones as she takes another ball low. Counts now 2-0. She is 14, runs batted in away from 300 career RBI in her career. Here's that 2-0 pitch. This skips even before the play for ball three. T.R.A. Jennings might have Hamilton a little shook here. Three balls and no strikes. Obvious take situation here. The pitch from Hamilton is it's a strike. When things get going for T.R.A. Jennings, they tend to come in bunches. Just saying. Here comes the 3-1 pitch. Jennings pops this one to shallow right field. Lundiff got a late break. Now circles under under it, makes the catch, and the Sooners add another, but get a double play that slows down the momentum just a bit. Here we go to the bottom of the second inning. Sooner softball presented by Love's Travel Stops. Love's Travel Stops, the heart of the highway. 
Five nothing Sooners. First pitch in the bottom of the second is outside and a ball to the DP Olivia Bruno. Two run home run from Tiare Jennings. Two run home run from Sid Sanders. An RBI single from Cassidy Pickering. If you're getting to us late, and that's what it's been for the first inning and a half. There's a strike on the 1-0. One ball, one strike. <laughs> I mean, this is a gorgeous night. A packed house. <laughs> that was dirty, but missed low. Two balls and a strike from Maxwell. They've had a sellout, or they were able to announce a sellout. But as typifies most road environments, a lot of crimson and a lot of Sooner fans here. The 2-1 is strike two. That's a beautiful spot from Kelly Maxwell. Jennifer McFalls barks down from the third base coach's box. The Kansas coach starts working on our third base umpire, maybe anticipating trying to get a few more calls on Saturday. Michael Parker over there. Here's the 2-2. Pop foul down the right side. That'll slice out of play. They announced the sellout. The Sooners saw some that made the trip up from Norman. Many of you from the Kansas City area. And the Kansas obvious surrounding areas. Wichita. I've just realized I don't know that many cities in Kansas as I started. <laughs> Topeka. Here's the 2-2 pitch. That misses up and away, ball three. But fans from all over the region and the Flint Hills can come and enjoy the Sooners with a bit of a shorter drive. It's not a bad drive from Oklahoma City. I'd say our Norman or even the metropolis of Goldsby. About 440 is what it took. The 3-2 is a nasty dirty. Swing and a miss. Kelly Maxwell spinning it. Strikeout number two, and there's two away, or one away. Strikeouts this season are brought to you by Tinker Federal Credit Union, Oklahoma's largest credit union. Campbell Bagshaw, the right-handed hitting first baseman, digs in. Maxwell, first pitch strike. This has got to bring a smile to Patty Gasso's face down in that Sooner dugout. Maxwell just pounding the zone here early. No balls and a strike. Foul back, 0-2. You know the times whenever Maxwell tends to struggle is when she falls behind and, and counts or some early walks. Good early, early start here in Lawrence. No balls and two strikes. The pitch. Oh, that just missed on the outer edge. And Riley Ludlam did a really nice job of trying to make that look a lot better than it was. But Maxwell isn't missing by much. One ball and two strikes. The pitch. Did she check her swing? I think she did. They'll check down the line. The pitch was up and away. Two balls and two strikes. Five nothing Sooners. We're in the bottom of the second inning. T.R.A. Jennings hit yet another home run. The pitch oh, just missed low and in. That thing moved across home plate. But this is slowing in, so Maxwell will try not to lose Bagshaw here. Pitch. Oh, they're going to say it's a ball that's a little bit outside. And they checked on the swing. They say Bagshaw didn't go. I'll put that in the don't count your eggs before they're hatched category. Chickens before they're hatched? Chickens before they're hatched. Sorry. As Maxwell walks Bagshaw, and here's Ashlyn Anderson. I'm sure Anderson's trying to atone from her earlier mistake whenever she dropped an infield pop that led to a sooner run. And nearly wears the first pitch from Maxwell that spins inside for ball one. Worried at all about Bagshaw over there at first? Maybe not. Hasn't attempted a stolen base yet this season. This 
is a Kansas team that has a few spots in their lineup that they'll get their runners going as the 1-0 is fouled back. They had a pretty good group of hinge runners that they've used as well throughout the season. But not a team that gets too carried away on the base paths. There's 22 of 27 on the season. For reference, the Sooners are 40 of 44. Ground ball to third, could be two. Brito to second for one. Torres turns it. Oh, they got her! Inning over! Brito to Torres. And the stretch from Sanders and the Jayhawks are wiped out in the second. We head to the third. Oklahoma five, Kansas nothing. This is Sooner softball from Learfield. Alyssa Brito will lead things off here in the third inning. Back to work for Casey Hamilton. First pitch swinging, and it's a line drive into left field caught by De Roche, who had to race in a bit to make the play. Brito's 0 for 2. Here's Ella Parker. The designated player. Shout-outs in the third inning are presented by Century Roofing on guard for Oklahoma. Log on to CenturyRoofingOK.com. Ella Parker. Flight out to left, and her first hit bat on a, probably not the best hit bat Ella had as she takes strike one. Uh, first in today was my man Doug Hamilton in Hockley, Texas. Asked, is Patty back to being 100%? Oh, absolutely. I think everyone was a little bit under the weather over the last couple of weeks at some point in time as Parker takes strike two. Now, listen, if that's a strike for Casey Hamilton, that's got to be a strike for Kelly Maxwell to right-handed hitters too, because she threw that same spot twice in the last at bat and didn't get the call. Here's the 0-2. Parker pokes one foul to stay alive. Big exhale from the Sooner freshman. Uh, Larissa and Eric have checked in. Yeah, poor, poor rat the dog. He's got a guy yelling at him all night long that's no fun now the guy is me by the way here's the 0-2 pitch ball hangs up a little high one ball two strikes Parker short wall I saw the kitches are in a hotel in Ankeny Iowa at a weather conference well we are definitely a tick up in excitement from that the one-two. Ah, oh, Ella Parker went chasing, swing and a miss, and there's quickly two away. Five runs on five hits for the Sooners. Kansas has been shut out thus far. By Kel, uh, Kelly Maxwell. There's Brooke and the Loopers. I had heard from Brooke this week. A little bit disappointing. Larry and the St. Pete Sooner in Sooner Judy in Silver City and Randy in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Here's the first pitch to Torres, who lined out to center field her last time up, and she takes strike one. Now, Patty Gasso is going to call time and talk to Alina Torres. Coach Gasso said, Plank, I need more shout-outs. Coach, you got it. Sooner Judy in Silver City, as we said, Randy in Fayetteville. Steve Kintz got us tuned in. Oh, there's Evan. Good to, good to see you tune in tonight, Evan. Tim is in Lexington, Nate Dog, Gunny, Debbie and J.O. Parker in Montezuma, Iowa. Nick is having to work late, so he's tuned in while in the operating suite at Houston Methodist. Whoa. Surgery. Are we talking doctor operations here, Nick? All right, meeting from Coach Gasso and Alina Torres is over. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Hamilton. That skips all the way to the backstop. I'm just, I'm just saying. I, I appreciate you listening, but if indeed we're in a situation that you're doing surgery, that kind of operating suite, it's okay. You can catch us later. One ball, one strike. Five, nothing Sooners. In danger of going in order for the first time today. And the 1-1 one, one pitch catches the outside corner for strike two. Either our home plate umpire, Tony Williams, realizes he's got dinner plans, or the zone has greatly expanded here in the top of the third. 
Here comes the one, two. Torres pokes it deep to right field. It is over the wall and out of here. Alina Torres is on some kind of heater as she takes one over the right field wall, and Oklahoma has homered in each inning. And a two-out bomb from Torres makes it 6 nothing Sooners. Wow. How about Alina Torres, y'all? Chalk up home run number seven on the season for Alina Torres. Oklahoma's starting lineups batting averages, 432, 438, 432, 436, 417, 463. I mean, how? Riley Boone digs in. She's at 463 on the season. She pounds this one foul. Boone singled and scored in the second inning. Mickey and Nikki's got us on in Sugarland tonight. Tim as well. The 0-1. Ooh, Riley Boone had a cut, swing and miss. Saw my buddy Mark Worley earlier. There's Trey Linda Kerr. Brenda's in Lindale, Texas. Bobby McKay in BA and Cowboys sooner. I'm not saying anything about the umpire. Six nothing. I'm just saying the zone seems a little wider here this half inning. Here comes the 0-2 up high. It's got to be one of the top five most cop-out statements I've ever said on the air, though, too. I'm not saying anything about the umpire. I'm just saying the zone seems expanded. A ball and two strikes to Boone. No, you why not a little two-out run here. The pitch way outside. Two balls and two strikes. Tina Kays and Edmond. Faye Lemke in Norman. The Shattucks are in Durant. Joanne's in Norman. Jimmy and the Sharps are in Edmond. Brenda in Lindale, Texas. They're enjoying a great start to this night for Sooner Softball. 6 nothing with two outs in the top of the third. 2-2 pitch to Boone. Bounce to the right side. Big hop for Rozak. Gloves it, throws, and gets Boone with a step to spare. And that'll do it for the Sooners in the third. Hey, thanks to Vince, Rudy, and Paula. Tune in from East Norman. Savannah De Rocher will lead things off for Kansas. We're in the bottom of the third. Oklahoma, six. Kansas, nothing. First pitch from Kelly Maxwell is a little bit low and in ball one. Quick switch of shades over at first uh, first base for Sid Sanders. It's Kelly Maxwell. Wait, what's going on here? They've got the count now at 2-0. There is no violation yeah, it's a 1-0 count. I think the scoreboard got screwed up is what happened. Unless our, our home plate umpire, there couldn't have been a pitch clock violation. The, the home plate umpire is saying it's a 2-0 count. All right. I, obviously, I guess an illegal pitch was called on Maxwell. No, that would be a dead ball. What? There is no way it could have been a pitch clock violation. I wonder if she had taken the ball out of her glove. So now she's behind 3-0. All right, so Savannah De Roche gets a gift ball, three balls and no strikes. Whatever Coach Rocha got is the explanation she accepted, so I assume it's her taking her ball out of the glove once she got on the rubber. There's ball four. That's an unfortunate start for Kelly Maxwell and her second walk. Second in the last three hitters. Our buddy B.A. Fat Boys tuned in in the back porch in B.A. They say it's beautiful in B.A. tonight. Sooner Yaya in northwest Oklahoma City. Kevin from Kansas. Darla's got us in New Walla. Jim Sharp. Big Zilla's got us in Ada. Papa Wheelie in Choctaw. Here we go. Shout-outs will continue through the third. We'll focus on softball as Sarah Rozak takes ball one low and away. Huh. Rozak, a 234 hitter. Again, not a threat over at first to go from Desrochers. There's a strike. In fact, Desrochers is 
0 for 1 in her stolen base opportunities this season. But it might be a spot down 6 nothing where Jennifer McFalls might try the hit and run to get the bats going as the 1-1 is bounced foul. Sooners have stayed the same defensively with Riley Boone in left. Jada Coleman relatively shallow in center field with the shades on. A few steps deeper, straight up right field from Cassidy Pickering. Sanders is way off the line at first and deep. Deep up the middle is Torres at second, Jennings at short, and Brito is third. Swing and a miss. And the one-two, and there's a strikeout. The third of the game from Kelly Maxwell. Strikeouts brought to you by Tinker Federal Credit Union. Here's Price. Her first plate appearance of the game. The walk to De Roche was also the first time the leadoff batter has reached for the Jayhawks as the first pitch misses outside ball one. Showed Bunt, everyone came crashing in. And as De Roche slid back into the bag, as Riley Ludlam looked her way, she kind of went head first and took a face full of dirt. And an awkward slide. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. Chased on the rise to the center fielder, Angela Price. Speedy Price. Keep her off the base paths. 9 of 10 on stolen base opportunities this season. Has drawn eight walks, but has also been hit by six pitches. Though she is well off the plate for the 1-1, which is a bunt down the first baseline. Sanders will field it and tag her two away. The right fielder. That, that was that was odd. Kind of like she was trying to push it down the line to beat out a bunt. Maybe misinterpreted the athletic ability of Sidney Sanders, or or it's got a little bit too much of it. Ainsley Lunda, leadoff hitter, grounded out to second to start this game. The pitch. Grounded towards short. What a play by Tiore Jennings. Picks it and throws it and gets her. That ball looked destined for center field, but Jennings flashed in front of the bag and made the play to end any threat here in the third. We headed the fourth. Sooners worked quick in the bottom half of the third. They headed the plate in the fourth with a 6 nothing lead back to work for Casey Hamilton. Sid Sanders will lead things off. She homered her last time up, and she takes a strike. Say it got quiet out there. That's what happens when you turn off the crowd mic. Six runs on six hits for the Sooners, including Sanders' home run that came back in the second inning. Eleventh home run of the season for Sanders. She pops this one foul. It's going to get out of play. Nice catch by a fan in the stands. In case you can't tell from the applause by the crowd. A no ball, two strike count, though. Oklahoma trying to put potentially the finishing touches on putting this game in run rule territory. Here's the 0-2. Ah, she got it. Sanders chased the screwball that drifted well out of the zone for... The second strikeout for Hamilton. Big smile on her face. As here comes Riley Ludlam. We heard in our Riverwind Casino keys of the game from head coach Patty Gasso that one of the keys for Sooner pitching staff today was to stay ahead of hitters. So far, I guess you can say mission accomplished on that. First pitch to Ludlam is way outside. You had the couple of walks from Kelly Maxwell, but the Sooner defense has stepped up and been solid behind her. Three strikeouts, two walks so far in the 38 pitches that she's thrown. 38 as the 2-0 pitch misses out. Uh, The 1-0 pitch misses out, 2-0. 38 total pitches. That's it for Kelly Maxwell through three. 21 of those strikes so see if the Sooners can't add to this six run lead here as Ludlam takes a strike Sooners have won 19 in a row which is a wildly impressive winning streak (laughs) unless it's compared to 70 
Two balls and a strike. Riley swings that screwball. He gets since Hamilton getting a little confidence in the circle. Riley reached on that dropped pop-up by Anderson in the second inning. That was right after the home run from Sid Sanders. The pitch. That one stays out. Full count. We got two military choppers, it looks like, beyond center field. That's pretty awesome. 6 nothing Sooners. The 3-2 pitch to the Sooner catcher. Grounded sharply towards short. Picked backhand by Kreit. Throws across. Got it. Good job by Kreit. Didn't have to move too much. And they'll count on Cassidy Pickering to turn the lineup over to the Sooners. We heard from Cassidy's grandparents in our third inning shout-outs in Willow Creek, Montana. As the first pitch to Pickering, who drove in a run with a hot shot back in the second as she takes ball one lone one. Good to see Matt and Banjo have a synced up down on the corner. Tina in Georgia. While watching on ESPN Plus also has us synced up. Appreciate that. The 1-0. A little bit out to him. We mentioned Pickering had the RBI in the second, which for the freshman was her 23rd of the season. A two-ball no-strike count here. See if Hamilton brings her something near the zone. She doesn't. Ball three. Pickering shakes her head as she walks one step out of the batter's box. Nods down towards Coach Coach Gash, though, as she digs back in. A 3-0 count. Sooners trying to avoid the first 1-2-3 inning of the game. And Pickering loops one in her right center field that's down for a hit. How about that? Oklahoma has hit number seven on the game. And Jada Coleman will stride to the plate with a runner aboard and two away. Six runs on seven hits for the Sooners. Kansas has been shut out so far with the one air. Two runners by way of the free pass. First pitch to Coleman. Leaks outside, ball one. Jada singled and scored in the first inning. And on a hot shot back up the middle, Kripe made one of her first really nice plays. And she turned the double play by stepping on the bag and getting Coleman fairly easily over at first. Jada shows bunt, takes ball two outside. Boy, Hamilton seemed to be cooking through the first two batters of this inning. Striking out Sanders and getting the ground out for Ludlam. She fell behind 3-1 to Pickering, and Cassidy launched one in the right center field. Now behind 2-0 to Ada Coleman, who takes ball three. Three balls, no strikes. We're going to have a quick little meeting at the circle. Hey, we do have a lot of games to get you caught up on with the Big 12 scoreboard. As always, the Big 12 scoreboard is brought to you by Air Comfort Solutions, your total home solution for plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and electrical. Make the winning call today. Earlier today, BYU took the first game of its series with Houston. Final score 11-3 to in favor of the BYU Cougars. Meeting's over. Here's the 3-0 pitch to Coleman. That's... Ball four. Jada waited for a moment, thought it might have been a strike. And Jada Coleman is aboard for the second time today, and here comes T.R.A. Jennings. They're just underway in a huge series in Lubbock, UCF, and Texas Tech. Whoever wins that might have themselves a shot at making the big dance. Later tonight, Texas at Oklahoma State, a huge one, Iowa State at Baylor. 
Tiari's one for two with a two-run home run. And she grounds this one towards short. Kripe shovels to second. Rozak gets it and ends the inning. Tiari saw something she liked on the first pitch. Grounded out to end a slowly starting fourth inning. Schwab, the official hot dog of OU Athletics. First pitch to Lyric Moore and misses low for ball one. We're underway in the bottom of the fourth inning. Oklahoma leads it 6 nothing. Shutout performance so far from Kelly Maxwell as the 1-0 is strike one. We, we didn't get through a bunch of other scores, but there's really not a lot going on yet. They're early on in Alabama and Kentucky. A little bit later tonight, obviously we mentioned Texas, Oklahoma State, just underway at A&M, LSU. As Moore fouls this one off. Oregon, UCLA should be fun tonight in Los Angeles. Arizona, somehow still ranked. They take on Stanford this evening and some big ones out west with Washington and Oregon State. 5 p.m. seems like an early start time to me for some reason, but here we are, the 1-2 in the dirt. We'll take it as long as the Sooners continue to roll. A two-run first-inning home run from T.R.A. Jennings. A two-run second-inning home run from Sidney Sanders. Mix in an Alina Torres solo shot in there and a Cassidy Pickering RBI single, and it's 6-0. Good spot. Cold strike three. That's been a strike all night. We just haven't got that call much at all. That sits down one of the more dangerous Kansas hitters in Lyric Moore. And chalk up the fourth strikeout for Kelly Maxwell. Here's Haley Kripe, a strikeout victim her last time up. First pitch from Maxwell in the dirt. Boston College and Clemson are playing a series that starts in Clemson, South Carolina tonight. Clemson out to a 10-2 lead in that one. Run rule territory in the top of the fifth. One other big game in the SEC underway, Florida-Mississippi State. 1-0 misses up high. Florida has jumped up on top of Mississippi State, now 2-1. Though the Bulldogs, the Lady Bulldogs, are coming. Adding a run in the bottom of the third inning. That should be a fun one. Here's the 2-0 pitch from Maxwell. Swinging and fouled at the plate by Kripe. Mentioned that strikeout in the first on the season, though, Kripe has been one of their leading hitters, one of three starters over 300 in the lineup. Second on the team with 23 runs batted in. Here comes the 2 1. That's a great spot right on the outside corner. Strike two. Defense remains unchanged for the Sooners with Boone in left, Coleman in center, and Cassidy Pickering out in right. They're pretty much straight up right now. They're giving the line to Cry, who fouls this one back. A little bit more towards the gap in right center and left center field for Boone. Brito's even with the bag for now at third. Straight up short for Jennings and straight up second for Alina Torres. Sanders a little off the back over at first. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Foul straight back again. Kripe's got a chance to be one of the big stars in the future Big 12. Just a sophomore. Hits the ball hard. Takes ball three there. Last season, though, was a struggle as a freshman. Hit just 198. But burst out of the gates with a two-hit, three-run, three-RBI performance in the opening season win against St. uh, Peter's. And she swings through that one for strike three. Kelly Maxwell keeps stealing. Fifth strike out of the game for Maxwell, and there's two away for Olivia Bruno. Bruno was a strikeout victim in the third. 
The first pitch, swing and a miss. When you can't be at the game, Sooner Sports TV has you covered on the air and online at Soonersports.tv. Sooner Sports TV is presented by our cornerstone partners, Anheuser-Busch and OU Health. No balls and a strike. And the dirt. Good job by Ludlam. Six runs on seven hits for the Sooners. Maxwell has been fantastic throughout. Two base runners, a walk in the second, a walk in the third. She struck out three of the last four batters and has a 1-1 count here. Boy, that's a really, really good spot on the 1-1 that just misses a little low. Two balls and a strike. I will say this, of all the places we've been, I don't know if there's been a faster scoreboard than what they have here in getting the count updated. It's on point. Here comes the 2-1. That ball hung up a bit. Three balls and a strike. Full count. No freebies. That was Patty Gasso's charge in the pregame. The 3 2 pitch. Cold str- Ooh. That was it. It's a 3 2 count. That was 3 2. Okay. I got ahead of myself. Three balls, two strikes. I thought that was called strike three right there. That fast scoreboard. Three balls and a strike. He got me again. Now here's the 3 2 from Maxwell. Ooh, that was in the same spot. And she didn't get it. Ball four. Oh. That's a tough one. Here's Backshaw. Last time up, she walked. That's three walks surrendered so far by Maxwell. And again, no real concerns about Kansas on the base paths, especially facing a six run deficit. First pitch. Strike. Very deliberate strike call, (laughs) as it has been all night long from Tony Williams behind home play. Six nothing sooner, six runs on seven hits. Here comes the 0-1. That's up high, one ball, one strike. Runner at first was a recipient of a two-out walk. That's Olivia Bruno. Kansas has had a base runner in each of the last three innings. And the 1-1 is a swing and a miss. There's now officially a 1-2 count. (laughs) Maxwell, long stare in. From the belt, brings it home, and foul straight back with that hit off the front look out what a catch that hit off the front facing awning and rocketed back down towards the stands and a dude that looks just like stone cold steve austin caught it there in the second run and then proceeded to yell what a ball and two strikes the pitch from maxwell got her swing and inning over oh kelly maxwell dealing that is strikeout number six. And as we head to the fifth inning. And Chatonet Square. Alyssa Brito will lead things off for the Sooners here in the fifth. Fifth innings brought to you by the Hal Smith Restaurant Group. Enjoy great dining experiences at any of our restaurants. Visit HalSmith.com to learn more. Well, Brito, uh, Brito is 0 for 2, which means she's due. And she takes the first pitch up and away for ball one. Six runs on seven hits for the Sooners. Kansas has been shut out. Zeros all across the board. One ball and no strikes. Brito's season average currently sits at 422, and she pops this one deep to right field, but it won't be deep enough. As at the warning track, Linduff is there to make the catch, and there's one away. There's There's not quite the wind pushing out to right field as there is to left field, and looky here. Kinsey Hansen will pinch it. This time with full approval from Patty Gasso. <laughs> As Coach walks down and hands the lineup card to our home plate umpire to make the adjustment with K9. 
if you were with us in the pregame show, you heard Coach Gasso say there was a really good chance we'll see Kinsey get in at bat tonight. We were watching Joe put her through her, the whole team, through their pregame activation, their warm-up. Hanson looked good. She was moving around well. This is a pretty big weekend to get the captain hopefully ready in time to get back for Texas full-time. Struck out in her plate appearance last Friday night against Baylor. And the first pitch is fouled back. Pardon me. Saturday afternoon against Baylor. If she would have walked to the plate at Hall of Fame Stadium, that place might have exploded. They just now reset the pitch clock, so plenty of time for both Cam- uh, Hamilton and Hanson. No balls and a strike. Pitch. Way out. Hanson seemed to tweak something on a home run last Friday night against Texas Tech. She's currently hitting 361 on the season. As the 1-1 pitch is headed home. Grounder towards short, backhanded, drop. Hanson's kind of beat out an infield single. And Patty Gasso immediately is going to go to, oh, that's a pretty big moment that just happened right there. I thought Coach Gasso was going to go bring on a pinch runner. And she looked over to Hanson <laughs> and said, you good? And Hanson said, I'm good. And so while everyone in the dugout was expecting Kinsey Hanson to have a pinch runner, she's going to stay in here and run as Alina Torres steps in. Here's the first pitch to Torres, who homered her last time up, and she takes it high. Okay. They're going to rule that an error, which, again, if – If Kripe would have been able to field it cleanly, I don't think she had a shot anyway, even with Hanson kind of hobbling a bit down the line. Here's the 1-0 to Torres. That's a strike, 1-1. That'll be the second error charged to the Jayhawks here tonight. The first was on the uh, third baseman, Anderson, so the left side of the infield. couple of E's so far in the Sooner six zip lead. Can Torres add to it? She'll take strike two and fall behind a ball and two strikes. University of Oklahoma and Sooner Sports Properties would like to thank our concession partners, Anheuser Busch, Fletcher's Original Corny Dogs, and Ashbird Coca Cola, the Baked Bear Community Coffee, Taco Mile, Boomerang Diner, Schwab Meat, and Uber Eats. A one ball, two strike count on the Big 12 Player of the Week. Torres takes it away, up and away. Two balls and two strikes. Riley Boone waits on deck. Heard from Gayla Boone on the road trip to go see her son play AAA baseball. Trevor, it's like he's in Arizona this weekend. Well, you are missed here, Gayla. As Riley waits on deck, here is the 2-2 to Alina Torres, and she pops one to right field. That'll get knocked down and right in the glove of Lunda for the second out of the end. (laughs) <laughs> Torres, the bat, ended up somehow right outside the circle. Jennifer McFalls has something to say to the home plate umpire. The left fielder, Coach Castle and Jennifer McFalls are really good friends. They That's somebody that if Oklahoma gets a chance, they're going to try to play because Coach Castle feels like playing McFalls coach the teams makes Oklahoma better. First pitch to Boone is right on the outer edge. Now the history for Oklahoma in the series against Kansas might not necessarily indicate that. Oklahoma's won 19 straight against Kansas. They're 78-44 and 44 overall, and they haven't lost to the Jayhawks. In Lawrence, it's 2000 and. What was that? Looking at 14. There's a beautiful bunt down the third baseline. The throw. Oh, they're going to say it. Got her. Fale of you is shaking her head, and she'll turn and walk towards the dugout. Patty Gasso going to think about challenging this? It was close, but no. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Oklahoma 
holds on to a 6-0 lead over Kansas. This is Sooner Softball from Learfield. Fifth inning misses low for ball one from Kelly Maxwell. 6-0 Sooners. Fifth inning is presented by the House Smith Restaurant Group. Enjoy great dining experiences at any of our restaurants. Visit HowSmith.com to learn more. Here's the 1-0. That's in for a strike. Anderson grounded into a 5-4-3 double play that ended the second inning. There have not been a lot of opportunities with runners on base for Kansas today. Here's the 1-1. Swing and a miss, strike two. In fact, Kansas has only had one plate appearance with a runner in scoring position. 1-2-3 first, the walk and the double play in the second. The walk and a 1-2-3 after that third, and Kelly Maxwell struck out three last inning around a walk. And the 1-2 misses just a bit outside, two balls and two strikes. Oklahoma has only had two plate appearances with a runner in scoring position tonight, but lead it 6 nothing. Here's the 2-2. Line drive right back to Maxwell. Look what I got. One away. <laughs> T.R.A. Jennings has a smile on her face on a ball that looked destined for center field. And here's Savannah De Roche walked and was stranded at first in the third. Rozak scheduled hit next. Yeah, she waits on deck. Here's the first pitch to De Roche. Soft grounder on a kind of full swing back to the circle. Maxwell throws to first. And quickly, there's two away in the fifth. The second baseman. Here's Rosa. Jennings' home run tonight. He's kind of looking over some numbers as the game goes along. Is the 86th home run in her career. She's approaching, obviously, 90. Swing and a miss. Strike one to Rozak. Crowded out her last time up. Partner struck out her last time up. What am I looking at? Here comes the 0-1 from Maxwell. Boy, that's a good spot. Missed a little low. So she is at 13 on the season, 86 for her career. And she's driven in two tonight. That is 43 runs batted in on the season. As the 1-1 pitch almost hits Rozak. Two balls and a strike. So, 288. Career runs batted in for Jennings. Hard hit foul. Two balls now, two strikes. It would be wild to chase that if Jocelyn Allo hadn't launched the career home run, uh, home run record into oblivion that could be currently taking place. <laughs> As the 2-2 pitch is headed home, fouled back. I think 86 career home runs for Jennings. Chamberlain held that mark at 95 before Allo surpassed it. Jocelyn's final career number was 122. I don't think anyone's going to catch that. Two twos in the dirt into the backstop. Heading into the weekend, as far as 2024 is concerned, The national leader in home runs was Carly Spade, who has hit 20 in 29 games. Got a pitch clock reset, action clock. As the 3-2 pitch headed home, bounced towards third. Brito backs up on it, plays the hop, throws across, and we head to the sixth, and Kelly Maxwell is spinning a gym. There's zeros all across the board. Patty Gasso as she heads towards the third base dugout, sharing some words with a home plate umpire. There, here's you're supposed to get a minute thirty between innings, and I, they're not giving that between innings, and I think coach a little bit of frustration about that. 
In fact, she's looking over on the TV side and <laughs> getting Claire to be on it. She's got a big smile on her face. As the first pitch to Sid Sanders is sky to shallow center field. Price races in, is under, and makes the catch, and there's one away. Sanders had the first home run in a couple of games in the second inning. Now she's 0 for her last two. And Coach Gasso will start parading a few pinch hitters, including Hannah Core. So Tiari Jennings again, I'm infatuated here with Jennings numbers tonight. At 13 home runs, would move her into the top five currently in the country. Now, granted, we got some Miami of Ohio games to go this weekend. Alyssa Brito, by the way, is right there at number eight. The Sooners are the one of only two teams in the country that have two players in the top ten in home runs hit this season. The other is... Miami of Ohio. Golombeski is second. Carly Spade is one. All right, here's Hannah Core. Sixth inning, Sooners up 6 0. First pitch to the right handed hitting core is up high for ball one. People of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas are on the job 24 7, producing the energy to fuel modern life. Plus, they contribute millions to our state schools every year. Hear all their stories at oerb.com slash micro. Here's the 1 0 to Core, and she lifts one to center field. Shallow center field, relatively shallow center field. Price is under it to make the catch. That's four straight, retired by Hamilton. And a two for two night for Cassidy Pickering as she dive, uh, digs in. Diving into the batter's box would be something, though, too. First pitch to the Sooner left-handed hitting right fielder. Top of the lineup waits on deck. Pickering might like this nine hole a bit. First pitch. Swing and a miss. Took a little off that. Humble Texas product. The number four recruit in the class of 2022. Pitch stayed a little low. One ball, one strike. Top of the lineup, waits on deck. Sooners, Sooners haven't had a 1-2-3 inning tonight. Trying to avoid it here in the sixth. The 1-1 from Hamilton spins it away outside. Two balls and a strike. Oklahoma State is struck first against Texas. Cowgirls lead that one. One zip in the top of the second inning. Huge matchup in the Big 12 in the sport. A 2-1 pitch misses low ball three. We'll head to Austin next week. Always an interesting trip. Final time is conference mates in the Big 12 and then Two will join forces in the SEC, hypothetically speaking, joining forces. 3-1 is ball four. That's a pretty good pitch. We'll take it. Well, the Sooners haven't had their – they've now gone through the lineup without getting a hit since Pickering's last plate appearance. Looks like we're going to get a pinch runner. Maya Bland is going to run here for Pickering. Pickering singled with two outs in the fourth. Since then, Sooners have had just two base runners. Coleman reached on a walk. They ruled. Did they change? Well, let's change. Did they change Kenzie Hansen's scoring? I think they may have given Hansen a hit on that. Let's double check that. Bland is aboard, though, here. Pinch running for Pickering. There's two outs for Jada Coleman. I mean, just hit one over the center field wall here, Jada. First pitch, headed home. Jada, check swing, foul. Indeed they did. So, change Kinsey Hansen's fifth inning plate appearance. We all kind of scoffed, wrinkled our eye, 
a little frustrated at the ruling of an error, but they will give Hanson a hit. So officially now eight hits on the board for the Sooners. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Jada. Pops this one foul. Out of play, 0-2. Coleman versus KU in her career. Came into tonight hitting 522. Two home runs, six runs batted in against Kansas in the career of Jada Coleman. She takes the 0-2 way outside. But she's not the leader in career home runs against the Jayhawks for the Sooners. The answer to that trivia question stands on deck. T.R.A. Jennings, the 1-2. Ground ball back up the middle, a base hit. Jada Coleman just reached out and scorched one back up the middle for the ninth hit of the game for the Sooners. Her second of the game. And here comes T.R.A. Jennings. Jennings homered in the first, flied out to right in the second, grounded out in the fourth. And now bats here with runners at first and second and two outs in the top of the sixth inning. It's a 6 nothing Sooner lead. First pitch, swing and a miss. Well, just got a piece of it. Jennings has that season average currently sitting at 435. Eighty-six career home runs, two hundred and eighty-eight career runs batted in. Here's the 0-1. A little out, one ball, one strike. Two out hitting has always been a strength, not necessarily tonight for the Sooners, though they are with a hit for from Coleman. Now three for eight. The one one. That hangs way up high. Kind of got stuck on the hand of Cam- uh, Hamilton. Two balls and a strike. Two balls and a strike. Bland at second. Coleman at first. The pitch. <laughs> Jennings had a cut and fouled it back. All you guys checking in later in the game, Mo Sooner from his daughter's track meet in Ava. Saw Brett Leverage up in New York City. Philip listening while slinging feel for loves in the 918. Appreciate all you guys staying with us tonight. 6 nothing Sooners. The 2-2 pitch to Jennings. Low and away, ball three. And if they let, if they let Alyssa Brito bat here with the bases loaded, She'll make this a 10 nothing game. Wind still gusting out to left field. The 3-2 pitch to Jennings. That's hit pretty deep to right field at the wall. It's caught by Lundiff. And that'll do it for the Sooners in the sixth. Patty Gasso was uh, making a lineup change as she walked back behind home plate because we got a lot of shifts for the Sooners defensively. Alina Torres has moved over from second to first. Avery Hodge is now in its second. And Maya Bland is going to stay out in right field. So Bland in right, Coleman in center, Boone in left. Torres at first, Hodge at second, Jennings at short, Brito at third, and a battery of Maxwell and Ludlam. It's 6 nothing Sooners. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning in the first pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one for the nine-hole hitter, Angela Price. The only blemish tonight for Kelly Maxwell, the walks. Three of them so far this evening. The 0-1 is fouled back 0-2. Kansas has only had... Four plate appearances with a runner on base. The Sooners are four for nine in that category here this evening. 
Here's the 0-2 from Maxwell. A little bit low and in, 1-2. and two. The lights start to come on here at Orocha Ballpark. The one ball, two strike pitch from Maxwell. Foul back. It is a dirt infield with turf everywhere else. Remember, we went this season to McNeese, Louisiana earlier this year. That was a turf everywhere, which I hadn't seen. Central Arkansas has a similar field. The Sooners played on that. I believe it was in 15. It's the one-two pitch from Maxwell is grounded foul. This, on the other hand, is turf all the way around, but that dirt infield is maintained. It seems like a pretty smooth infield. We'll have to ask you some of the girls about it tomorrow. Some of the fields can be a little bit questionable in this conference, not anything that anyone's doing on purpose. It seems to be a pretty smooth one, the surface here at Rocha Ballpark. Here's the one-two pitch. Pop foul and well out of play. Beyond the right field wall, this pair of outdoor cages, but they have a fantastic indoor facility just beyond the right center field wall. Not sure what shot you guys are getting on ESPN Plus. But that entire area, that gray area with the Jayhawk, is all hitting. There's a one two pitch in the dirt on the way to the backstop, two balls and two strikes. And the wind has been blowing out here. Beyond the left field wall is the KU, the state of Kansas flag, and the U.S. flag. All blowing out, though not as strong as they were earlier. The 2-2 is a soft ground ball, right side. Nice hustle and range by Avery Hodge. Makes the play, throws to first, one away. She was ranging to her left and kept ranging and ranging, hit the brakes, and throws out the speedy price. That's five straight retired by Kelly Maxwell. And here's Ainsley Linda. Ainsley Linda is 0 for 2 tonight. Grounded out to first in the first. Grounded out to short in the third. And she takes a ball a little bit low and away. One other note about this facility, it's... A really, really cool setup for not just KU, but also the entire city of Lawrence and the county as the 1-0 pitch misses low and in 2-0. This is part of Rock Chalk Park, which includes... Indoor tennis facility and outdoor courts. The 2-0 pitch is hit foul down the left side. There is the home of Kansas soccer, track and field, and their throws. This is also, this area is where the KU football coaches are officing out of while renovations are taking place in Memorial Stadium. But here beyond... The parking lot in left field is an actual community center. Tennis courts, swimming pool, gyms. If you live in this county, you have access to it. To one swing and a miss. So not just as a student or not just as a Lawrence resident, but if you live in this county, because that's an actual taxpayer-funded facility, that's a city facility. It's pretty cool. The 2-2 pitch, off speed, missed up. But it is off campus, so we're not walking the hills of the gorgeous campus of Kansas to get here. It's a short bus ride from our hotel. Three balls and two strikes. Maxwell brings it home. Looped into left field. Riley Boone is there and makes the catch, and there's two away. One other note on just facilities, this is, a, as we mentioned, a relatively new facility. As it fully opened in the spring of 2014, it's 1,100-seat stadium. It's 
Maxwell stares in for the first pitch. It's fouled off. One of the first times I ever went and covered an Oklahoma-Kansas softball game was when they still played on campus. I didn't know if I was ever going to get to come back because the Sooners lost. In extra innings, 4-2. to two. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Maxwell, swing and a miss, strike two. Actually, let me defend, let me correct my ear. The first year I came was the 2013 loss. That was when, that was when we got rained out and ended up having to play two on Sunday. There's a swing and a miss. The ball hits the dirt. Ludlam throws to first. I, I don't think she needed to throw to first. Riley Ludlam is double checking with her home plate umpire, and that'll do it for Kansas. Down. Alyssa Brito will lead things off for the Sooners here in the 7th. 6 nothing OU. And the first pitch is in for a strike. Capacity crowd here in Lawrence. Has watched the Sooners jump out to an early 6 nothing lead and basically hold Kansas threatless. There's a bomb. Deep to center field. Is it out of here? No. Caught at the wall, an absolute rocket off the bat of Burrito. Comes up short in center as Price makes the play, and there's one away. As strong as that wind is blowing out to left, you can't help but wonder if that may have knocked that down just a bit. But some of those flags, they have, what, three, four flags around. Well, they got flags all around the outfield walls. Those are blowing straight across towards left field. Here's the first pitch to Hanson. It's a little bit out. Hanson reached on what was ruled an infield single her last time up. Hitting in Ella Parker's spot. Ella started 0 for 2. Hanson trying to battle back from a knee ailment that's held her out since the Friday against Texas Tech. Takes ball too high. One other note on that trip we made in 2013 when Kansas beat Oklahoma 2-zip. I'll never forget watching Coach go through the process of trying to decide if it was safe to play. Out in grass outfield, it rained most of the day. And they were thinking about it. Here's the 2-0 to Hanson, and she skies one to center field. Shallow center field, racing out. And then at the last second, racing in is Price, and she drops it. Hanson strides into second. Kind of throws her arms out like, all right. And that will be the second error on a pop-up on a play that Price came racing in, called off Kripe. And the next thing you know, Hanson standing at second base, and Ella Parker will pinch run for her this time. Your attention, please. Reentering the game for Oklahoma at second base, number five, Ella Parker. Here comes Ella Parker. The pin run at second. Here comes Alina Torres. The Big 12 player of the week has homered here tonight. She's one for three. Oh, you looking to score a run for the first time since the third. Torres pokes this one deep to right field, but again, that's just the ball's not flying in right field. Catch is made by Linda. Parker tags and advances to third. There's two away for Riley Boone. Or, as I just mentioned, Quincy Lilio. Lilio is starting to get into a bit of a groove. Given her opportunities, it's obviously tough. You know, Torres has done a really nice job of grabbing hold with the way she's hit the ball of second base. And now we're having a disagreement between Jennifer McFalls and our home plate umpire. Not too animated yet. I don't know where the frustration could 
but the frustration could be from here. Your attention, please. Pitch hitting for Oklahoma. Number 43, Quincy Lilio. We've had a couple of issues. Alina Torres, when, when she releases the bat, it takes off. And that's the second time that McFalls has said something about it. That's what that was about. Here's Q. First pitch, lefty-lefty matchup is outside for ball one. I don't mean, I don't know if it was just the angle that we saw it today or the fact that Riley Boone had to go pick it up from the circle. <laughs> but I don't know if I've seen Torres bat fly like it has here today after it leaves her hand. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Lilia. That's outside. Lilio has a home run this season. But again, not anything too jaw-dropping statistically from Q so far. Kind of get the sense, though, that the versatility she brings is something Coach Castle likes. There's ball three low and in. She has walked five times this year. And then in that has scored five runs. Six-nothing Sooners. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Parker stands at third. Avery Hodge is in the on-deck circle. Here's the 3-0. Strike one. Home runs from Jennings, Sanders, and Torres has been the difference tonight for OU. And an incredible job in the circle from Kelly Maxwell. Here's the 3-1. Good pitch for strike two. Jada Coleman leads the cheers on the top step of the Sooner dugout with Riley Boone. As they watch Q try to add to this Sooner six-run lead. With Parker standing at third and two away in the seventh. Here comes the 3-2 pitch from Hamilton. Ground ball, nice play at third by Anderson from her knee. She throws, what a scoop by Bagshaw, and Lilio is retired. Everything about that defensive series for Kansas was elite. All right, here we go. To the seventh, bottom of the seventh, six-nothing Sooners, Kelly Maxwell. First pitch in the bottom of the seventh. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss from the three-hole hitter, Haley Kripe, who has struck out twice here tonight. Sooners offense came out on fire. They've simmered down a bit, but not without opportunities. Kelly Maxwell, though, has been steady. There's a foul ball, strike two. will be on the air tomorrow night regardless of what happens over the next few minutes here at 5 o'clock, 4.45 pregame show. Weather looks gorgeous, similar to what we have here tonight. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Kelly Maxwell. There's one away in the seventh. Update from Stillwater. Oklahoma State has added a run in the bottom of the third. Ailey, Texas, 2-0. 7-4 to four now, Florida over Mississippi State. Something about Texas and Stillwater. They just seem to struggle against the Cowgirls. First pitch swinging, looped foul down the first baseline by Olivia Bruno. Unofficially, now officially, eight strikeouts for Kelly Maxwell. Eight straight that she's re- retired. Bruno is 0 for 1, walked in the fourth. The 0 1. Foul straight back, 0 2. We'll head down to the field for the Bud Light post game show to hear post game thoughts of Patty Gasso and hopefully a player of the game. No balls and two strikes. Field completely in shadows as that misses low. No more dealing with the snow. Well, I say that. I look out in right field, and Maya Bland's got the shades on still, a little area where there's some sunlight in right. 
One ball, two strikes. Maxwell from the belt, brings it home, check swing, got her. Two away, Maxwell, her ninth strikeout of the game, third straight player retired by way of the K. And here we go. Six nothing Sooners. Campbell Bagshaw, 0 for 1 with a walk. The pitch. Ooh, a little low. Six and two thirds. Nine strikeouts, three walks. That's it. One ball, no strikes. Maxwell brings it home. Bounce towards third, foul. One ball, one strike. The lefty Maxwell stares in. The pitch hit pretty deep to center field. Jada Coleman on the run, and it's gone. Oh, man. Kelly Maxwell took a no-hitter to the bottom of the seventh inning with two outs and an absolute bomb off the bat of Bagshaw. Breaks up the no-no and the shutout at 6-1. to one. That's the first hit for Kansas tonight. And that breaks a streak of nine straight retired by Kelly Maxwell. Anderson grounded into a double play and lined out back to the pitcher. She's arguably hit Maxwell harder than anyone tonight, and Kelly throws one to the backstop for ball one. Maxwell had a no-hitter earlier this year against Tarleton State. That came on March 12th. That was a five-inning no-hitter. There's strike one on the 1-0 pitch that paints the outside corner. Bagshaw's home run is her third of the season. A team leading 25 runs batted in. Here's the 1-1 from Maxwell. Fouled off a ball and two strikes. Everybody clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. Six runs on nine hits for the Sooners. One run on now just that. One hit for Kansas. I'm going to get a fresh set of softballs here. The Sooner fans who are behind home plate are standing. Now the rest of the crowd sporting crimson and cream joins them. Maxwell. From the belt, brings it home up high. Two balls and two strikes. Six one Sooners were in the bottom of the seventh inning. The pitch from Maxwell and the dirt full count. Torres has stayed in at first, as has Hodge at second, along with Maya Bland out and right. The 3-2 from Maxwell. Pop foul again, pretty good at bat going here from Ashlyn Anderson. Oklahoma State's lead is now 4-0 in the bottom of the third inning. They're not done. They got two on with two outs. Here's the 3-2 from Kelly Maxwell. Fouled off again. Might have swung at ball four. 
There's some big series in the Big 12 this week and beyond just the these two. That Iowa State Baylor series. Iowa State has played Baylor well. Probably kept Baylor from hosting last year in regional play when they beat him to end the season. Now Baylor desperately needs that series. The 3 2 pitch again, ball four. Fourth walk of the game for Maxwell. Six one Sooners. We'll get a pinch runner here as well for Kansas. They'll go to the bench and bring in Caden Stafford. And here's Savannah Day Roche. She walked. Oh, we got a pinch hitter. All right. And it looks like Abby Carsley will pinch hit. Abby Carsley. So Carsley will pinch hit. 364 average this season. Oh, here comes Jen Rocha. We'll slow things down just a bit. Well, obviously, you go from a a moment where I don't know if Kelly Maxwell was aware that she had a no-hitter or not. I'm sure she was in some way, shape, or form. And you give up the two-out home run to Bagshaw. Two outs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The home run came on a 1-1 pitch, too. Sooners put six on the board in the first three innings. And from that point forward, has just not been able to cash in on opportunities. Maxwell was no hit in Kansas until two outs here in the seventh. And here's the pinch hitter, Carsley. First pitch in for a strike to the right-handed hitting Carsley, as we mentioned. 364 average this year, but only 4 4 11. Has two runs batted in, one extra base hit. And she swings and bounces one to third. This should do it. Brito up with it, throws. Bowl game, win column Sooners, game over. Oklahoma has now won 20 straight games, and they take game one of their weekend series with the Kansas Jayhawks by a final score of 6 to 1